COVID-19 has unleashed a tsunami of xenophobia in the United States. There's been a rise in attacks against the Asian community in recent months, but some activists are now fighting back. Will Denslow has more from New York. Discrimination was already beginning to spread before the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in New York City. Witnesses to this alleged assault in a subway station in early February claim the woman was called diseased. In response to this wave of incidents, advertising and marketing firm Admirasia launched the platform Racism is Contagious to map alleged incidents of hate. Asians are typically um, being labeled as model minority here in the U.S., and many uh, don't believe that actually Asians would suffer from um, discrimination. So I think there is a huge room for a public awareness campaign that can um, help the uh, general public out there, regardless of race or ethnicity, to understand uh, the situations Asians are facing. As of July 15th, the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council reported more than 2,300 incidents of discrimination against Asian Americans over a roughly four-month period. Tammy Cho says she's been the victim of racism on several occasions in recent months. In one incident, Cho says someone shouted racial slurs at her as she was taking a walk in Los Angeles. In April, she co-founded Haters of Virus to raise awareness about hate crimes and help give people the tools to counter misinformation. Some of the ways you're trying to address misinformation is when we call it out directly. So um, we have a frequently asked questions page on our website, as well as we try to address them through our social media graphics. Racism is contagious. Hate is a virus. These are among a number of initiatives launched around the U.S. to combat the rise in harassment and discrimination. In February, Chinatown development groups and local lawmakers in New York City launched the Show Some Love in Chinatown campaign in a bid to help support the local community. And in May, the city's Commission on Human Rights launched a $100,000 public education campaign to fight COVID-19 related stigma. The agency is distributing ads online and across the city in a bid to educate the public and encourage victims to report cases of abuse. The commission fears rhetoric out of the White House is exacerbating the problem, a view rejected by the Trump administration. It is often the case, historically so, that specific groups of people are targeted to be stigmatized or to be scapegoated for a crisis or for a pandemic. And we have seen this, you know, of course, in the past with things like HIV AIDS. Some businesses in Manhattan's Chinatown blame both the pandemic and increased stigmatization for a drop in foot traffic. But this outdoor dining initiative now hopes to give people a taste of what they've been missing and a reason to return. William Denslow, CNA, New York.